You're listening to So You Want to Start a Business podcast and I am your host Ingrid Thompson. Today we have a standout episode. This is something new that I'm trying out and I'm keen to hear what you think of it. Here's where the idea came from. Often when I'm speaking with a guest and I'm listening to the way they say what they say and I think to myself this is gold. This what they're saying right now has never been said quite like this in quite this way and it deserves to stand out on its own. So that's what I'm doing when I'm bringing you this first of the standouts. You may remember Kelly Commodore, who was our guest on episode number 158. And in that episode, she explained imposter syndrome in a way that I have not heard explained previously. And she gave us her solution to how she is working through imposter syndrome in her life. Hmm, imposter syndrome affects so many people, which is why I want to bring you this episode. You know, all of business has become so overcomplicated and I aim to simplify, especially the financial side. My mission is to help small business owners find lasting financial safety. And that's why I wrote the book, So You Want to Start a Business. This book helps you understand business fundamentals and find your level of financial safety in your business. This book is the only advertising on this podcast. Look out for it at your local independent bookstore and order your copy or head to wherever you buy your books online. Okay, so now here is Kelly talking about how she overcame imposter syndrome. My chapter title is From Imposter to Inspiration because I was told years ago that I was suffering from imposter syndrome, which (laughs) means in case, yeah, in case folks don't know what it is, it's not truly believing that anything good that happens to you that you're deserving of, that even if you know that you're qualified to do something, you don't go for it because you don't feel that you're worthy of a a raise or a promotion or to start your own business or to approach someone and give them a proposal to do work for them. You just don't feel that you're worthy of it. And in the chapter, I was very honest. Um, I don't have a college degree. I did two years of college and had no idea what I wanted to do, Ingrid. I was taking a business course, a pharmaceutical math course, and a creative writing course all in the same semester because I had no idea what I wanted to do. And short of just becoming a a serial college student, I said, okay, I'm done. I need to figure this out. And I took a year off. And in that time, my husband and I got married. And then a year later, we had our son and the rest was history. I just never went back. And not having that degree has really worked on me over the years Mm -hmm. because I worked with so many people who were, who had MBAs, who were graduates, even from a four-year college, whichever Mm -hmm. route they took. To me, I felt less than these people sometimes, even Mm. though I knew that I had the skills and the talent to do things, Mm. there was times I was afraid to give a suggestion or give my opinion in a large meeting, because what if I said something that wasn't right? Or Mm. what if someone looked at me and and knew that I didn't have a degree and said, well, why would you say that? You don't have a college degree to back that up. And Mm. I realized if within the last two years that for what I do, the experience that I have and just the continual learning that I do, whether it's taking a Udemy course or whatever I do to make sure that I'm staying up on the times really is more important than a degree that I would have earned in 1994. <laughs> you know, that's when I would have graduated from college. You know, that's, Do the math. I'm 49 years old. So I would have that degree that I would have earned, say that I would have taken a business, you know, route and, and got a business degree what would that really do for me right now? There was no social media back then. There was no internet back then, really. There was, everything was just coming out. And I was actually turned down for positions through the years because I would get to that recruiter or whoever, and they would say, so-and-so is interested in speaking with you. Your experience is out of this world. You didn't list your, your education on your resume. And I would say, I do not have a college degree. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Commander, we we can't go any further. We're only looking for people with a college degree. And I remember telling one recruiter, you let them know that the experience that I have and my network of professionals in the city would outdo any degree that I would have earned. Like I said, in 1994, I'm not being mean. I just want them to know that that's how I feel about this. And she's like, honestly, I will tell them that. So the recruiter 
probably saw my side too, because she had probably yes. turned on multiple people yes. Yes. without a degree. So the yes. imposter syndrome, it still does plague me, not as bad as it did. And I wow. think telling my story in the 21 book that I created and, and brought everyone together, that has helped me immensely. I feel like yeah. a weight was lifted off that I just, I'm coming out to say, I don't have a degree, but I can still work really hard for you and get results. Yeah, yeah. And and it's the experience. I love the way you've described that. I've never heard anybody say it like that before. Mm -hmm. um, is that like the redundancy of the 1994 um, the whole idea of that and in fact the value of the continual learning and I was thinking that as you were describing the three subjects that you did you know like the pharmaceutical maths and the creative writing and you know what a combination but it actually demonstrates to me um, and I'm sure it demonstrates to a lot of the listeners that you are actually interested in learning and you're interested mm -hmm. in things and it doesn't matter sometimes where that goes, it's the, it's the ability to learn, the ability to think differently, the ability to expand, um, you know, that's what the value of that is. Um, that's truly wonderful. And just for everybody listening, the book is 21, as in 20 W-O-N, as in women who won, not O-N-E, as in the, yeah. So it's a pretty, and where do we get that book, Kelly? Tell us now. Amazon. Please. It's available on Amazon. It's you on can do Amazon. Digital, mm -hmm. Yep, you can yep. do a Kindle version, a digital download or a paperback. And like you said, it's the word 20 spelled out and then W-O-N for yeah. one. So I highly recommend it too. There's some wonderful women in that book. And um, I, I, I have to say, Kelly, uh, the way you've described that about the imposter syndrome, I've never heard anybody describe it like that. So I'm so pleased you shared that with us. And Imposter syndrome is an issue for many people and it shows up in many different ways. I like the way Kelly explained it as not truly believing that anything good happens to you you're not deserving of, that feeling of not being worthy, not speaking up when we have ideas, not asking for a pay rise, not asking for the amount we feel worthy of in our businesses, resulting in underpricing, not submitting proposals and much more. Even though she knew she had the talent and the skills to make suggestions, she held herself back. Her revelation came when she told her story and realized the value in what she does and the experience she has combined with her continual learning and that that is how she stays up to date with the times. And this is really more important than a degree she could have had from graduating in 1994. As she told that recruiter, my experience, my network in the city far outweighs degree qualifications. Telling her story made the difference for her and I certainly encourage you to do the same. Take the time and really dig into all your experience, your successes, the results that you achieve with and for your clients. I have an activity that I like to do with all my clients to help them work through this. So if you'd like some suggestions on how that could work for you, email me ingrid at healthynumbers.com.au if you want some help with this yourself. Or follow Kelly's example and start writing your story. She gave the example, I may not have a degree, but I can work hard for you and get results. If that becomes your mantra, you know, I may not have those qualifications, but I can get you the results. What if your mantra was, I can get you the results? Make a list of all the results you have achieved for your clients in the past weeks, in the past month, in the past year, however small or large the results. Make yourself a cup of tea or a pot of tea and get your pad and paper out and your computer or your computer and a list of all your recent clients. What results have you achieved for each of them? Read through your Google books and your Facebook um, testimonials. Remind yourself of your expertise and your skills. Write them all down and list them out. Take the time, set your timer for half an hour or an hour or two hours. You can beat imposter syndrome through constantly reminding yourself and we can all beat imposter syndrome, constantly reminding ourselves of how we use our expertise and our skills to bring about results for clients in our own unique way. I'm waiting to hear from you. When you do this activity, what difference it makes for you? Let me know, in Ingrid at healthynumbers.com.au. Thanks, Kelly, for your unique take on imposter syndrome. Are you ready to take action? Set aside some time and make an inventory of your results, of your skills, of your expertise. Till the next time, thanks for listening.